That is Marco Rubio, who is of Cuban descent, uh, reacting to the news that a sitting United States president will go visit and land on Cuban soil. Kenneth Moton, ABC News radio correspondent in Washington, D.C. Kenneth, this was big news yesterday. It really was. ABC News broke the news that President Obama will be the first sitting U.S. president in 80 years to visit the island. And this historic visit, it really is a clear sign McGraw that President Obama believes that there is progress in Cuba, despite what the critics say, despite what Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz um, said heavily again last night. And they've said it on the trail over and over again. But yes, um, diplomatic relations, you know, restored between these countries. But I will already say that when it comes to the relationship between Cuba and the U.S., it's Congress, which still holds a lot of power in that full restoration um, of ties between the two countries. You can't look too far without Florida being one of the giant prizes in the presidential election. Does this help or hurt the Democrats in the fall election opening up ties in Cuba with a Democratic president? Well, you know, when we've talked to Cuban Americans in South Florida, I will say that the reaction obviously is heavily um, against um, um, giving the Castro brothers any more power. Um, I think that Cuban Americans, they want to see these diplomatic relations and these ties restored, but at what cost? And so there's back and forth. I think it depends on who you ask and um, before how long, you know, how long the, the, the time from when they, the, maybe their parents or when right. those uh, Cuban Americans left Cuba. And now I think if you ask the younger generation, they'll be open to it. But I think it's the older generation that is really against it. And so that's why you see Marco Rubio. That's why you see Ted Cruz, um, whose parents you know, were born in Cuba, came from Cuba and, and got out of there right. uh, with such strong opinions. His father's from Cuba. His mother, Ted Cruz's mother, is from America, born right. in Canada, which is all that. But but that's a diff different story. Uh, it seems, Kenneth, that there's quite a bit of um, backing down from Republicans on a Senate nomination or, or Senate confirmation? On the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? That's what we've been seeing. You know, things were so heated Saturday night. The, the moment after we heard that Justice Scalia um, had unexpectedly died, and now we've reached that, what I called a cooling off period. But I say things are really going to heat back up, you know, after this country mourns and honors um, Justice Scalia starting tomorrow. Um, when he lies in repose at the Supreme Court and then uh, there'll be funeral arrangements or there'll be his funeral um, on Saturday. On Saturday. Right. And so I think when the Senate gets back here in Washington and gets back in session next week, that's when we'll hear that rhetoric starting up again. But there are some key Republicans, including Chuck Grassley from Iowa, who's the head of the Senate Judiciary Committee, who is who he's the, the gatekeeper when it comes to, you know, getting the, the president's nominee and then holding confirmation hearings um, and then allowing this to go for a vote to the Senate. And so Grassley has left it open that you know, maybe we should listen and hear from the Obama administration. Now, will we vote for the nominee? <laughs> uh, that's a different story. But will we be open right. to that person? And Vice President Joe Biden has already said um, this morning that we've gotten news and reportedly that he said the president will pick someone down the middle, a moderate, someone who Republicans can also get behind. This is an interesting time. Kenneth Moton, ABC News radio correspondent in Washington, D.C. Kenneth, thanks for checking in. Thank you. 624 here at Big 550 KTRS, R&R &R Sanitation Porta Potties. It's their busy season. They just got finished with...